Hi everyone. Welcome back to the Pajama Travel Club, the way to see the world without leaving the comfort of your house or your pajamas. I'm Eric Weiner, and yes, I am back on cushion today. I will explain why in just a moment, but first, uh, I've heard from a few viewers out there, uh, and apparently you have questions. You want to know when will it be safe to travel again? I don't know, to be honest. You want to know what's up with Parker? Parker's fine, my sidekick here. You want to know, Eric, when will you buy a new pair of pajamas? Never. I love my cotton poly, poly blend. <laughs> Sweet. You want to know, Eric, when will we see Pajama Travel Club coffee mugs? Well, the answer is right now. Pretty cool, huh? You also ask, Eric, what is your favorite country? That's a tough one. It's like asking a parent, who's your favorite child? They're all equally special. And so it is with my countries. They're all equally special, but some are more equal than others. And one country in particular has a special place in my heart, and that is India, Meridil Hindustani He. And I would say that um, it, did, it wasn't always that way. You know, places are like people. Sometimes you love them right away, and sometimes it takes a while to warm up to them, and sometimes you never warm up to them. So I arrived in India many, many years ago as a correspondent for NPR. First time I'd ever been in the country and I was confused by India. Um, I was confused by the traffic and by the lining up or not lining up at stores. I was confused by every aspect of life and I wanted to change India. And I quickly realized I was not going to change India. Uh, India was going to change me. I needed to let go. Either let go or go crazy. And I chose to let go. And that, I think, is the lesson that India has taught me. The, the under underappreciated art of letting go, of expectations of pretty much everything. And that is something we need to remember right now because there's so much that's outside of our control. You know, there's a line from the Bhagavad Gita, um, the Hindu, one of the Hindu holy texts, a, a, a poem actually, and in it, Sri Krishna, Lord Krishna says to Arjun, who's a warrior and just kind of a regular dude, uh, he says to Arjun, in effect, you need to put 100% effort into what you do and have precisely 0% invested in the results, which is very hard to do, but it's... I've come to believe it's the only real recipe for happiness and for mental health. 100% effort into what you do, 0% invested in the results. In other words, let go. And I want to share with you um, a brief passage uh, from my book, The Geography of Genius, which finds me in uh, Calcutta, as it was known for many years, in Kolkata, as it is known today. And I'm sitting at, uh, in a beer garden in, uh, at a hotel, amazing hotel called the Fairlawn. And I hear this, the possibility of coincidence is greater here than it is elsewhere. The words loiter in the heavy air, mingling with the sound of clinking glasses, the chortle of laughter coming from a nearby table, and the muted traffic of Sutter Street before eventually lodging in my brain like an unwanted house guest. The possibility of coincidence greater here than elsewhere. Such nonsense, I think. And if I've learned anything in my travels, it is that one must take nonsense seriously, for it just might be true. The speaker of this possibly profound nonsense is a ruddy, cheerful, perpetually broke Irish photographer who goes by TP. Calcutta is his second home. He keeps coming back year after year, decade after decade. Calcutta is not an easy city in any sense of the word, yet that doesn't dissuade TP one bit. Coincidence is a precious thing, 
you take it where you can get it. Calcutta still manages after all these years to jolt TP, he tells me, nursing his kingfisher and going on about this alleged possibility of coincidence. I listen politely but silently wonder if the pre-monsoon boil that is Calcutta this time of year, the putrid months, locals call it, is playing tricks with TP's Celtic brain. Isn't coincidence by definition random and the possibility therefore no more or less likely in Calcutta than anywhere else? When I diplomatically suggest that he might be off his Irish rocker, TP responds by showing me a few of his photographs. A dog balancing and possibly atop a stack of tin cans, a simple room where the symbols of three of India's major religions, Christianity, Islam, and Hinduism, have miraculously aligned themselves as if staged by Adam Smith's invisible hand. The photographer's success hinges on his relationship with and proximity to coincidence. As I see in TP's work, these unexpected juxtapositions, the way the moving parts of time and space momentarily click into place, imbue a photograph with significance and with beauty. So be well, pajama travelers, until next time. Remember, stay at home, stay curious, and please, please, stay in your pajamas. No animals were harmed in the making of this video. This video is not intended to cure, cure treat, or diagnose any disease. Void in Utah. Bye.